Hello, everybody, and here we are with part five of our inspection workflow. It just keeps getting better and better. Um, we made data, we published data, we made a map with the data, we put the data out in the field, and we put the data on a dashboard. And now what we're gonna do is this, this last part is really kind of an icing on the cake. And we're gonna take a look at survey one, two, three, and how we can actually take that uh, related table information, the hydrant form that we were created, and make that accessible through survey one, two, three. So we made the form originally in Field maps and it looks really good in there. But in the event you have a significantly more complex form, being able to fill out that form in Survey 123 can really give it the look and feel of a modern digital form as well. So, what we're going to do in this video might not be necessary, but it could come in handy in the event you have really complex related tables that need to be filled out by your field crews. So, let's go ahead and dive in with part five. Here we go. I have actually the steps we're going to be following today at this link here. It is going to be included in the uh, video description down below, so no need to try to write that. In the event you want the written out steps and some extra pictures, this can help. Just thought I'd let you know that this is uh, what we're working off of here. But what do we have? Well, here's our hydrant demo we've been working with. And you know, here's the map, and here's the dashboard, and here's the data. And I wanna take a couple seconds just to talk about the data that's going into this as a quick reminder. This layer, it has the hydrant's point layer, which is the parent, and we have the child table layer called hydrant inspections. And if we were to dive inside of the hydrant inspections table here in the data tab, remember we have this GUID field, the GUID field, uh, that is linking this to the parent global ID. That's gonna be important that we remember that this field here is called the GUID field. Also a prerequisite for all of this, and we did this way back in video one, is that in order for this workflow to work, the feature layers that we're working with have to have the global IDs in both the parent feature class, as well as in this related table. We've already done that, we're good to go. It's just a requirement for survey one, two, three. So let's go ahead and hop into this for real this time. This is Survey123 Connect. If you have never gone into Survey123 Connect before, take a look below. I've put a couple links down there for some quick two to three minute tutorials of how to build a Survey123 survey. So if you're new to this, you might wanna pause and check out some of those videos first. So what I'll do is I'll come in here and I'll say, let's make a new survey and we'll give this a name. We'll call this uh, Hydrant Inspection. And instead of just building a generic template like this, I'm gonna pull on an existing feature service. That is a layer that already exists in my ArcGIS Online organization, the one we were just looking at a couple seconds ago. So I'm gonna go look for my hydrants layer that we have. And if I take a look through here, um, I can see here is my hydrant inspections uh, hosted feature layer, the one we've been working with this whole time. So we'll go into this. And I'm gonna build my survey one, two, three survey based off of this existing uh, hosted feature layer. This will work in both ArcGIS Online and ArcGIS Enterprise. So we'll give it a second. And what we'll see here is, here's my Excel table, but we're gonna kind of put that down for a second. But here's what my survey looks like. Everything up at the top here is all the information about fire hydrants, that's nice. But if I come down to the bottom, I'll be able to see Here's all the information for my hydrant inspections, you know, the paint required, change of part, etc. In the Excel table, here's all those same questions. Now, again, if maybe you're new to Survey123, as a quick overview, the way this works is each row is based on a particular attribute from the online feature layer that we just pulled on. And each row then is also a question in the survey. So up here, up top, I have all of the questions that are associated with my parent layer, which is the fire hydrant. And then in between the begin repeat and the end repeat questions down here, these are all of my questions that are associated with the related table. So the date and time of the inspection, the paint required, chains required, et cetera. This is what I care about. And since this is what I care about, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna delete everything from row 40 up, except for uh, row one. Row one's a good column or a good uh, row to keep in place just because it's all of our headers. All right, and then I'm gonna come down here and get rid of the end repeat as well. I don't need that either. So now what I have 
is just the questions from my related table. The inspection, the thing that I want people to actually fill out. So here we go, we got the type. Uh, it already pulled in the select one types, which is that yes or no values. That's already good to go. We've got the um, columns from our attribute table, that's good to go. And the labels over here, that's what my questions actually look like when someone goes to work with this, such as you can see here, inspection date doesn't have a space or anything. So what I'll do is in the Excel table, I'll just quickly clean this up. I think by now you know I'm a stickler for making these things look good. So, you know, inspection date, inspector, pressure. Uh, I can, again, put in spaces here to clean this up a little bit. And what I put in this label field, again, is what people are going to see when they actually access this survey. And just so we get a quick um, idea of what this is going to look like, when I press the Save button here, we're now only going to see the questions that are associated with the Excel table. So there's inspection date, inspector, pressure, and those questions regarding maintenance. I can reorder my questions as well, and I'm going to take maintenance required. I'm going to cut this out of here, and I'm going to insert it above paint required. So that way it's in a slightly better order. And what's nice about this is since now I'm working with Survey123, I have all the functionality that we would expect out of Survey123. So for example, I can make the default date, uh, pull in the time that it is when someone opens the survey with the now open parentheses, close parentheses um, annotation in here. I can make fields be required. So, you know, we'll make this field be required. Um, in fact, we're going to make um, all these fields be required because, well, we want to make sure we get, you know, complete data. Because this is a smart form as well, if I want to, uh, I also have the ability to use the relevant function. And simply put, relevant is that conditional visibility that in the event that I say that the um, maintenance required question, maintenance required is equal to yes, then question six here about paint required and then change required and other maintenance will appear for me. So I'll go ahead and press save and I'll come in here back to the preview of what my survey is going to look like. And now we can see time fills out automatically. Inspector and pressure are required. Uh, maintenance, yes or no, now works for me as well. So this functionality of survey one, two, three is now available to me, which is excellent and exactly what we're looking for with this. And maybe one last thing, if I wanted to, I would also have the ability to change my appearance if I wanted to as well. Again, same questions we were working with before uh, when we built this in field maps, but now we have the ability also to do this within survey one, two, three as well. Again, changing the look and feel or even the color of what this is going to look like when someone goes through it. Okay. Once we're happy with the way our survey looks and feels, there's a few things we still have to configure in this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add another question in here. Question number on, on row nine in my case. And this type of question is going to be a hidden question, which means that under no circumstance is this question ever actually going to be visible to the end user. What am I going to call this field? Well, this field is going to be my GUID field that links whatever survey someone's filling out back to the parent uh, hydrant that they originally clicked on to complete the survey in the first place. So let's go ahead and I'm going to call this field the exact same name that we just saw in the table in ArcGIS Online. I'm going to call it GUID. The label doesn't matter because no one's going to see this question anyways. It's going to be hidden. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll over to the right in my table and I'm going to make this question be Esri field type GUID. Just like that. One more thing we still have to do here. I'm going to go into my settings. This guy here needs to be updated. This is basically saying when this survey gets submitted, what hosted feature layer in ArcGIS Online is it going to go to? Well, it's going to go to this one here at this location. That's our layer we were looking at. But in particular, I don't want it to go to Hydrants. I want it to go to Hydrant Inspections, capital H, capital I, with an S at the end. So I make this be hydrant inspections. 
And with that, we're good to go. I'm going to press the save button. We're going to come back here. This guy has the look and feel we want it to have. It's um, you know got required questions, everything we want. And even on the back end with that GUID field that is not appearing here because it's hidden, we're good to go. I'm going to press the publish button because now we can take the survey and push it into ArcGIS online. And I'm going to come into the options and we don't need to create a web map. That's just a more clutter in our case. Press publish and we'll give this a couple seconds. And with that, I now have a brand spanking new survey that's going to be available for me through ArcGIS online. So if I come into my content, I'll refresh this. And as with all surveys that we create with survey one, two, three, if I come in here, I'll now see I have a folder for it. And in fact, here's my form. This is my survey one, two, three survey that I just created, whose data will be pushed into the hosted feature layer we've been working with in all of our previous videos. So where does that leave us now? Well, we've got the survey, we've got field maps. Now we need to bring them both together. And to do that, just to kind of highlight where this is in the document, because we do need a line of text or a line of, uh, of code a little bit, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use this guy right here. Now I've already copied and pasted him into a notepad because this is going to be useful for us. This thing that I've just called a line of code is actually a URL. It does three things for us that are pretty simple. The first thing it does is it opens up survey one, two, three. It then opens up the particular survey of interest, the one we just created, and it links whatever survey we're filling out to the parent hydrant. Simple enough. I just need to update some things here. I'm going to change the square brackets on global ID to curly cube brackets, right like that. And then I need to tell the system, hey, what survey are we actually trying to open up here? Well, I can figure that out very easily. Here's my inspection form that we just created. I'm gonna click into it. And this up here in my URL, this is the unique identifier for this survey in ArcGIS Online. From the uh, question mark ID equals, grab everything after it, we're going to say copy, and then I'm going to rip out the square brackets, item ID and square brackets, and just paste that in. And I'm going to need this in a couple seconds, so I'm going to copy it. All right, so now we've got this URL, we've got this survey, let's, you know, let's take it home. Here's my hydrant inspection map. This is that map we've been working with. We've been working with this since I believe our second video. Well, how do I get this URL into here so that way when someone taps on a fire hydrant, they're able to access my survey? Well, that's controlled through the pop-up. Now, I'm going to click on hydrants. And over here on the right, I have all my different options on how I want to configure this layer within my web map. I can click on configure pop-ups. And then I have the text here. This is the text that appears when someone clicks on the hydrant. So if I click on this fire hydrant here, dry barrel, install date, asset ID. We set this up a few videos back. Well, I'm going to add in, you know, a space here, and I'm going to say tap here to complete survey or hydrant inspection, whatever you want to do. And now I'm going to select this. I'm going to select this, and I'm going to click on the link button. And so when someone taps on this, it's going to take them to that URL that we just created. And as I'm pasting this, I realized I actually forgot something very important. This thing here that says parent GUID equals global ID, this needs to match that GUID field's name. So I'm going to change this from parent GUID to just GUID. And press save. And I'm going to press OK. So now we've got a URL in here. Tap here to complete survey. I made some changes to my map. So now I'm going to press the save button save. It's saving and it's done saving. Excellent. Let's go ahead and take a look and see what this is going to look like for us out in the field. So I'm going to go ahead here and let's uh, let's pull up field maps. I made a change to this map just now, so I need to reload my map. Maps dot 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 reload map. Perfect. So here we go. Let's let's take a look at this hydrant here on Chicago Ave in the center of the screen. So I'm going to tap on him and click on dry barrel. And there's my information from before, but now I have tap here to complete survey. So I'm going to do that. It's going to automatically open up survey one, two, three. I may need to log in if I'm not logged in already. 
and it's going to download the survey for me. So there we go. So there's our inspection date and time. I can fill out my name. I can put in the uh, pressure that I have. And there's that smart form functionality. No versus yes. I can fill out my information. And when I'm done, I'll press the send now button. It just pushed through. So now if I go back into field maps, tap away, we'll see that fire hydrant now appears green because the inspection has been completed. So with that, what I've been able to do is I've been able to take um, an existing hosted feature layer that we already had, that we already set up a form for, but in the event I wanted to integrate survey one, two, three, four, a more advanced form, I was able to connect a survey to an existing hosted feature layer and set up the survey and then make it accessible through the web map. So that way field maps and survey one, two, three were linked together. So with that, that completes part five. I'm going to add on an extra part six to the end of this, um, just simply because that's going to go over how to actually take all this and share it and create groups within an ArcGIS Online organization. It's great that we've made it, but right now I'm the only person who can see all this stuff. And I've talked about sharing, but I haven't actually gone over how to do that. So part six, the next video is going to take a look at building groups and sharing content across an ArcGIS organization. As always, thanks for watching. Thank <music> you.